Last night, what brought you out? Did you have you heard my radio show, or people told you, or what's the deal? You, you, you weren't here last night, right? Did what? You no. were not here last night, correct? No, I was not. So what brought you out? Just curiosity. Well, I am a pizza town line. Oh, okay, good. So are most of you guys doing your job already? No. Negative. Who's not doing your job? I'm going to talk a little bit about you. Just two of you? Who else is not doing your job? You already are. We, we, we're, okay, we're, you're already on board. We're getting information. Yeah. I was going to tell you my story, how I got how I got hooked up. You guys want to hear that? Yeah. yeah. How I got hooked up with you? I'll tell you that. You want to hear about me personally, or you all know yeah. it? I know. You're just being easy. Okay. You're just yeah. saying, yeah, there we go. You want to give me all your money? Let's go. No. Let's go. no. Yeah. Let's check it. Let's Start with you and let's go. Start with you and then we'll just get going. All right. I like the way you operate. Let's get the show on the road. All right. Good. I got it. All right. So I started, I got involved with Young Jebby back in 1997. So I've been doing Young Jebby products for 17 wow. years. Wow. Yeah, it's a long time, right? Uh, what happened to me is, I had a pharmacy, yeah, a special pharmacy, I was telling you guys yesterday, I had a compounding pharmacy where I was making things. And uh, one day I got a little tape in the mail. A cassette tape in the mail. You guys remember cassette tapes? Yeah. All right, I got a little cassette tape. Dead doctors don't lie. You know what I did with that tape? I stuck it in a drawer. Yeah. And then, a couple days later, I got another tape. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dead doctors don't lie. What is this? I put it in the drawer. Yeah. And then, sure enough, a couple days later, I got another tape. And before too long, there was a drawer filled with tapes. No lie. There was a drawer filled with cassette tapes. Dead doctors don't lie. Does this happen to anybody else? Did you guys yeah. anybody else remember? I would that? just like to know who sent you um, okay. what, Carson, or what happened was, there's a slight digression here, uh, somebody got the idea to tape Dr. Wallach when he was doing his presentations. His, his presentations were so compelling that somebody got the idea to tape them and send them out and to, to print up a bunch, not to send them out, but to print up a bunch or to copy a bunch and to sell them to people for a certain amount of money so they could send them out as a tool. Mm -hmm. So somebody made a lot of money just selling these tapes as a business tool. And so people got the idea, this is the early 90s, and, and multi-level network marketing still hadn't caught on quite yet. And so somebody got the idea of using this as a business idea. Uh, to yeah, I've got one of those too. I'm just wondering how you Recently or back in the day? Oh. Somebody just not got the idea. Because I'm not that old. Okay, got it. I'm a lot older than you. I'm a lot older than you. So, so back in the day, somebody just got the idea to use that as a marketing tool to send them out. In any case, I just shoved them in Droid and listened to them until one day, I decided to see what the heck all these tapes were about, and I just popped it in there, and I started listening to it. And you know if you listen to the tape, how many of you have heard the tape? No, it's a classic at this point. It's a very, very powerful message delivered very powerfully, and at the time, I was just starting to do some talks about nutrition, and as I was saying to you guys yesterday, I was starting to get a feel for how powerful nutrition could be as a healing modality. And so I put the tape in, and lo and behold, what I heard Dr. Wallach saying were things that pharmacists knew, but nobody else knew. He was talking about things that I had learned in pharmacy school about colloidal minerals, and about liquid nutrients, and about glucosamine, and about selenium, and about cartilage, and about, as I was saying to you yesterday, how diseases really at their core are nutritional deficiencies. And he was saying all these things, and I had never heard anybody saying them out of pharmacy school. These were things that pharmacists were privy to, and he was the guy in a talk on tape saying the same things that I had learned in pharmacy school, and suffice it to say, I was very, very impressed. And I listened to that tape over and over and over again, partially because I loved what he was saying, partially because I loved his style, and I had just started doing my own, I was starting to do my own talks. And uh, one day I... Uh, I was working out in the gym, and I started talking to a guy, I started telling him about the, this tapes I got, and about this dead doctor's online thing, and this guy says to me, and it's Robert Snook, he says to me, I know Dr. Wallach. He comes out here all the time. And this was 1997, and Dr. Wallach, sure enough, was coming out to Denver all the time, and, and Longevity was at the time called American Longevity. How many of you guys remember that? It's called American Longevity. It's a very small company, probably maybe a thousand people, the whole company. And Dr. Wallach was very accessible. He was traveling around, and my friend Robert said, I know Dr. Wallach. He comes here all the time. We hang out together. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know this guy? And I love to meet him. He said, sure, no problem. I'll hook you up. I'll, I'll take care of it. And one day, I was sitting in my lab working, my pharmacy. I was working, and then I had a glass, I had two, uh, glass doors, see through, you can see right through. And there's Robert with this little guy yeah. standing next to him, right? And I'm like, are you kidding? And he comes in, and, and me and Dr. Wallach hit it off. And, uh, 
he didn't know I'd been listening to his tape like maybe 10, 15 times, so I was like repeating back to him exactly what he was saying. So he fell in love with me, you know. <laughs> and, and he asked me if I would do his radio show when he was out of town. And sure enough, uh, I said, yeah. And I ended up doing his radio show when he was out of town. I was his, his, uh, you know, his Ed McMahon, his second banana. And uh, so for about 10, 10 years or so, till uh, about 2007 or so, I was the guy who did the radio show when he was out of town, which was quite frequently. I never really engaged in the business too much. And then around 2007, I started to participate a little bit more and a little bit more in the business. And long story short, I became entrenched. And now I'm on the scientific board, and I'm, there's, there's about three or four of us who are intimately involved in spreading the message. And the message is, as you guys know, because you're all on board already, there's a heck of a lot you could do to your body, with your body, by using nutrition. And this, this is true in a way that's not true about drugs. It's not true about any of the modalities that we use in the medical world. We can do things when, uh, to heal the body, to regenerate the body, to renew the body, to access, to leverage the body's built-in mechanisms using nutrition in a way that the medical model can only dream of. Yesterday I was kind of joking around. I was like, when a vitamin goes to bed at night and has a wild fantasy, or when a, I should say when a drug goes to bed at night and has a wild fantasy, it wishes and dreams it was vitamin C. You know? <laughs> it wakes up in the morning and says, oh, darn it, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah. But at night it fantasizes it was a vitamin because a vitamin and a, nutrition, uh, a nutritional element is really what the body needs when it's sick. When the body is diseased or is deficient or it's degenerating or it's not as healthy as it should be, what it's really do, what it's really crying out, what it's really telling us is that it's missing a raw material, a fundamental essential nutrient. Now, i got to tell you, and I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again, and I want to say it every time I do talks. I, wanna, I wanna really want to reinforce this. If we're sick, if we're not as healthy as we ought to be, it begins spiritually. And then works down mentally, and then emotionally, and then shows up physically. So I never want to be per, uh, portrayed, or I never want to present to you that I'm the kind of nutritionist who just says, "Take this vitamin, and you're going to be off, and you're going to be good to go." This kind of disease is just this deficiency because you got to address all the elements of health and wellness: and that mm -hmm. spiritual, mental, emotional, and then physical. All right. Once that's uh, once the, the upper dimensions are, uh, once the your needs, your upper dimensional needs are met. You can do a heck of a lot using physical, uh, using nutrition to help heal the body from a physical uh, perspective. Now, I went to, uh, I notice you guys don't have a lot of bookstores down here. Did you miss anything? <laughs> I found the books a million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I found that one. Well, yeah. um, I'm a bookstore junkie and I'm an I'm a information junkie, really. That's my favorite thing to do. You're in the Arkansas. Arkansas. All right, all right. I understand. I understand. What's that? Well, I did find the bookstore. I did find the one bookstore in town. There's right. another one. Another one? Yes, sir. Not the Books a Million? Not the Books a Which one are you It's um, down Central. Gosh, what's that? Is Where it the it Fat Man is? Downtown? The, uh -huh, downtown? I saw a little used bookstore. Yeah, it's a little used bookstore. Yeah, it has yeah. cigars and you things like that. that on the outside. The Golden okay. Lady? Yes. Yeah. They're closed. They're not oh, they they anymore. They're not closed. All right. Well, we saw a used bookstore. Here's the point I wanted to make is. I don't need an extra book. I've got a pretty darn comprehensive library. I mean, I've got thousands of books, but I'm a book junkie, and when I find a good book, I jump at it, right? And I found this really cool book today. It's called Untangling the Mind, Why We Behave the Way We Do. What this book is about, it's about how our brains work. Now, I like to think of myself as a, a calm, intelligent, evolved human being, but if you cut me off on the highway, I got a reflex of my middle finger that just goes like this. It just pops right up. And I'm like, what happened? You know? Because we operate this way. We operate in this way that we don't always understand. Because we from New York. What's that? I'm from New York, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's New York. It's a New York disease, right? You don't have that here in Arkansas? It's a vowel. What's that? It's a vowel in New York. It's a, what's that? It's like A-E-I-O-U. It's a oh, it's a vowel. Okay, all right. Well, in any case, I got this book because it reminds and I love reading about how our bodies, our, our minds work, but also how our bodies work. And it reminds me that, that we have access to a power inside our bodies that we have no idea of. We can program our home appliances, but we can't program our bodies. We have a better understanding of our televisions and our microwaves and our refrigerators than we do about our pancreas and our gallbladder and our digestive system, and that disempowers us. That makes us prey. That makes us victims for those who would predate on us. 
Those who would exploit us and take advantage of us. And I try to be calm, and I try not to get angry, but nothing... It's very difficult when I see my friends and my loved ones and I, people I care about being exploited and taken advantage of. And I see it all the time, and it's one thing if you're being exploited and taken advantage of for your money, but it's a whole other ball of wax if you're exploited and being taken advantage of for your bodies. Yes. And I see this all the time. I'm a pharmacist, and I'm in the world of predation. I'm trained in predatory behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm trained in it. I'm an expert in it via my educational background. And nothing torques me more than seeing innocent, gullible, sweet, honest, trusting people being taken advantage of. And I'm not going to speak for anybody in this room, but I can tell you the masses of, of, of Americans and probably humanity are that. Pray to those who predate on us because we are scared about how our about being out of control inside our bodies. And so my mission in life is to wake as many people up as I can to the idea that we are more powerful than we know. We have a built-in healing power that it allows us to heal ourselves without even thinking about it. In fact, every time we take a bite of food, that food get, gets processed and purified and becomes integrated into our bodies without us even thinking about it, without us even having to pay any attention to it. Every time we cut our fingers, the same thing happens. That cut heals without us even having to pay any attention, without us, uh, us having to think about it, without a, us having to place attention on it, without us having to do anything. And that is the testimony. That is the proof that there is a healing and regenerating system that is built inside us that all we have to do in order to access is feed it and sustain it. And if it's not happening, it's because we're doing something, we're missing something, we're not doing something correct. Now, suffice it to say, there's a spiritual, mental, and emotional dimension that has to be addressed. But from a physical perspective, we have to feed it, we have to breathe it, and we have to stimulate it, and we have to make sure it's got a warm place to... Do you guys remember Earl Butts? Who remembers Earl Butts? Who's from Arkansas, I believe? Anybody remember Secretary of Agriculture? Oh, yeah. Oh, remember? What's that? That was Warren Mills. I think he had a highway after Wilbur Mills. Yeah, I think Wilbur he ever had a highway after him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember Wilbur Mills and Danny Talks? I'm not the only one that remembers him. <laughs> anyway, you, all we have to do is we have to feed it, we have to breathe it, we have to uh, provide it with a clean environment, and that's pretty much it. But we, for some reason, if you look at the statistics, we're not even doing that. So my mission in life is to make that a simple matter to do. And it isn't that complicated. So what I want to talk about today is how you can access that healing power that's built into the system using a few simple techniques, and most especially using nutritional supplementation. Is that good? All right, now, I want to make sure I take questions, number one, because I didn't get to do that yet. Do you guys have questions that you want to ask me? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that I get to do that. So will you keep me, I hope you'll keep me on track, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then how much time do we have? Um, it's fine. So. All right. Yeah. No, no, I, I, have, I have two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, yeah. okay, two hours. I, I yeah. want to go like an hour and a half, and then I want to leave a half hour for questions. Yeah. So what time are we at now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost 7 now, so. Okay, so we'll go to about 8.30 or so, and then yeah. I'll take half hour questions yeah. and we'll do it until 9 o'clock. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I also want to make sure that I talk about the business a little bit as well, and we'll do that towards the end. All right, so health is a very, uh, nutrition is a very complicated subject. Nutrition, nutrition is an overwhelming subject. One of the things pharmacists are trained to do is simplify things. We typically will simplify things about drugs and about chemistry. And if you're like most people, if you have a question about herbs or you have a question about, probably not in this room, but most people, they have a question about herbs, they have a question about vitamins, or they have a question about medicines, they'll probably go to where? The pharmacist. Every year the Gallup poll takes a poll on the most trusted profession, and every year the most trusted profession is the pharmacist. So every year, year after year after year, pharmacists take great pride in the in the fact that they're responsible for simplifying very complicated information and making it easy to understand. So what I do, what I've taken it upon myself to do, is take very complicated information, or not, or, or not even complicated, but overwhelming information about the world of nutrition, and make it simple and easy to understand. I, I, I call it the eight chapters of good nutrition. So have you ever been to the vitamin store, and you look at the vitamins, and there's a mile, and row, and row, and row, and you look at it, and you're like, where do I begin? What do I do? You know that feeling? I have it too. You know, I, I've been trained in it. I'm a pharmacist, and I look at it, and I get overwhelmed as well. So where do you begin? How do you simplify this whole thing, this, this, this massive information? I simplify it by dividing all of nutrition up into what I call the eight chapters of good nutrition, the eight sections that you need to understand to understand all the nutrition. Once you understand these eight chapters, these eight sections, you can get a grasp 
on this subject of nutrition so that you can use it, so you can integrate it into your lives and into the lives of your family and into the lives of your friends. So what are the eight chapters of good nutrition? Well, first of all, the eight chapters of good nutrition are divided into two sections, two subsections, if you will. One, macro, two, micro. Talked about this a little bit yesterday. I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth today. Macronutrition is big nutrients. Micronutrition is small nutrients. The three major, uh, the five major macronutrients are protein, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, and water. And the three subchapters or subcategories of micronutrition are vitamins, minerals, and trace nutrients. And that's the whole world of nutrition right there. That's all you need to know when it comes to nutrition. Protein, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, water. That's macronutrients. Vitamins, minerals, and trace nutrients. That's micronutrition. So let's start off with chapter one. Chapter one would be protein and for good reason. The word protein means primary. Proteus means of primary importance. Protein is the raw material upon which everything is built. If your body is a sculpture, the clay is protein. That. You think that's important? If you have a sculpture, the clay is critical, right? The, the clay is the stuff that we are. The stuff that we are is protein. You ever heard, uh, probably all heard about genetics and genes. What does a gene do? A gene is a code for protein. And from that point forward, that protein gets manipulated and tweaked and changed and we become created, but the raw material, the clay, is protein. That makes protein the most important of all the chapters and it gets to be chapter one for that reason. Unfortunately, our bodies don't get the quality protein they need because proteins tend to be unstable. And they're especially unstable to processing and they're especially unstable to heat. On top of that, protein is expensive, which is why if you drive down this wonderful street here, Central Avenue, and you drive down the street, most of the food that you're going to see is not protein. Most of the food that you're going to see is everything but protein. And the kind of protein that you're going to see is not going to be quality protein, which means you've got to pay great attention to the kind of protein, to making sure that you get the kind of protein that you need. It isn't going to happen accidentally. You have to pay attention to it. So what is quality protein? Well, quality protein is going to be a protein that is minimally processed and has all of the nutritional value that it had when it was born, when it was created, when it was made originally different ways that you can get protein, but for the most part, the densest proteins are going to be foods that were at one time alive. It's very difficult to have synthetic protein. In fact, that's a holy grail for food scientists, is trying to create synthetic protein, and there are some prototype synthetic meats. That's the next, the next great step in the world of food technology is synthetic meat, synthetic protein. Now, it doesn't sound very appealing. Intuitively, we know that that's a problem, but you know what? In about 50 years, we're all going to be eating synthetic meat and synthetic, synthetic protein. That's the holy grail of food technology. Because protein is extremely expensive, because to make protein correctly, you've got to grow an animal. Either you've got to have chickens, or you've got to have uh, flesh foods, or you've got to have fish. On some level, you've got to have an animal that's associated with protein. Not that you're not going to find protein in vegetables and protein in legumes, but it tends not to be as dense as animal protein. So when it comes to protein, we measure the value of protein by something called BV. BV stands for biological value. It's a, a food science term. The best proteins are going to have high BVs. They're going to be the most valuable, have the most value to your body. They're most absorbable to your body. Does anybody want to guess what the highest BV protein is? Egg. The gold standard, I heard somebody say? Eggs. Eggs. Thank you, Savannah. Was that Savannah? But you, you had glasses yesterday. Very nice. Eggs are the, uh, uh, the gold standard on the BV scale. They get 100. BV scale goes from 0 to 100. Uh, eggs get a 100. Does anybody know about the one protein that is, there's only one protein that is actually off the charts? Eggs are the gold standard. They're 100. But there's actually one protein that's 101 or 102 on a biological value scale, which means you get more value from it than you put in. How cool is that? You get more protein value from this one food source than you put in. That's like... That's like you get interest on your protein that you put in. That's pretty darn valuable. 100 means you're using all of the protein. 90 means you're using 90% of the protein. 102 or 103 or 101, depending on who you ask, means you get more protein value than you did when you put it in. I think that's an important protein. You better believe it is. And what kind of protein is that? That is whey protein. Exactly. Whey protein. Whey protein. And I said to... I said to 
Uh, Eddie Jean, I said Eddie Jean yesterday, where I say you got to be a bodybuilder, right? We all have to be bodybuilders. If we want to be healthy, we want to be building a body, right? So even if we're not, even if we're not going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in the gym and we've got to be all ripped and buffed up, we still want to be building a body if we're healthy. And it's especially true if we're older. It's especially true if we're older. And a whey, a whey protein gives you more protein value than you put in. That makes it incredibly important for building. That's why it's a bodybuilder's favorite protein. That's why if you read bodybuilding magazines, you'll see uh, advertisements for whey protein on almost every other page. The trick with protein, however, is because it's very, very unstable, you have to be very selective about the kind of protein you use. Now, if you're using egg protein, if you're using egg for your protein, that's great, but you've got to make sure you're using whole eggs. It isn't the same when they, with the eggs that come in the box are not the same. Remember, the protein's very unstable. If you go to a, at our hotel today, there is a buffet with eggs, uh, you know, with the, the scrambled eggs in there. Do you think those are real eggs? No. No. no, of course not. So you have to be extremely careful with egg protein, likewise with whey protein. I get a lot of people talking about how whey protein is expensive, and indeed it is expensive, and protein is very expensive, but it has to be expensive if it's going to be made correctly. You don't want a cheap whey protein, and you don't want to be saving money on your egg protein. As far as meat goes, the same thing is true about uh, meat. You don't want to be saving money on your meat. You don't want to be buying discount meat, and you don't want to be buying old meat. In fact, ideally, you don't want to be eating any supermarket meat. You want to be hunting and eating your meat fresh and grass-fed. That's ideally the way it is if you want to be eating meat. Same with fish, same with any other protein. So protein, you have to be extremely concentrated, you have to be extremely vigilant about the kind of protein you choose. Whey protein is going to be the best. Egg protein is the... It's probably, it's probably the, I say the second best, but only because whey protein is, is so superior to any other protein. Fish, meat, these are all down the road. Uh, 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 vegetable proteins are a little bit tricky. Now, any vegetarians in this room? Okay, you're probably eating a lot of, uh, uh, where are you getting your protein from? Probably beans, probably the legumes, because legumes are the next highest concentrated protein that's not, they're the most highest, the most concentrated non-animal protein are legumes. Legumes are beans, peanuts, peas, not all, no nuts or nuts. Like only peanuts are legumes. Legumes. Not What's that? Protein. Not. You can, but they're not going to be as high as legumes. Mm -hmm. Legumes are going to be your highest. But the problem with non-animal proteins is you don't get something called growth factors. Animal protein, not meat, but egg and whey give you growth factors that stimulate the growth of tissue. And by tissue, I'm talking muscle tissue. I'm talking skin tissue. I'm talking about connective tissue. It stimulate the growth in a non-protein way, especially eggs and especially dairy. When a baby is born, remember I was saying yesterday how when a baby is born, a baby is born premature? Remember, who, who was here yesterday? Remember I was telling you that? I was saying babies are born premature. We're born, you, uh, mammal babies are born premature. But nature has set up a system where growth factors will be found in the dairy, in the milk, in the breast milk. If you are eating, getting your protein from whey, you're getting protein from dairy, you're getting protein from eggs, you'll, have a, you'll be able to take advantage of these growth factors that you don't get in vegetarian proteins. And I'm mostly a vegetarian myself, uh, so I'm not ripping on vegetarians, but I'm just saying that if you are a vegetarian, you've got to be vigilant about making sure that you're getting protein correctly because you're going to be missing out on these growth factors. So it becomes extra important that you get these proteins. Uh, you get these uh, growth factors and, and quality proteins. Does that make sense? Yeah. Growth factors are going to be missed if you're a vegetarian. Gro or I say, should say a vegan, not a vegetarian. Yeah, vegan. Dairy products. What's it? You're, yes, because you still get them in dairy. Yeah. And vegan, mm -hmm. not vegetarian. Now, proteins are like long chains, like necklaces. And necklaces are made up of little beads. And likewise with protein. You have hundreds of thousands of proteins. You probably have on the order of 200 different thousands of proteins in your body. It's like in the English language. You've got probably 150,000 words in the English language, but those words are all made up of letters. From 26 letters in the alphabet, we can convert those 26 letters into 100,000 to 200,000 different words by stringing those letters together differently. Likewise with protein in the body. Proteins are long, I call them necklaces, but you think of them as words. And each one of these proteins, these 100,000 proteins, is made up of little letters. Anybody know what those little letters are called? What are those little letters called? DNA? No, they're called amino acids. Oh. Amino acids. And these little amino acids are strung together in different, in different combinations to make different words. 
So by eating the right kinds of amino acids, you can make the right kinds of words, which is why you want to make sure that when you're eating your protein, you're getting a wide variety of proteins. Egg, and whey, and legumes, and meat, and flesh to make sure that you're getting, and a fish to make sure that you're getting the complete spectrum of your amino acids. There's 22 or so different amino acids, nine of which your body cannot make. These are called essential amino acids. Anybody remember the term essential amino acids? Uh, yes. Essential amino acids are amino acids that you better be getting in your diet. If you do not get enough protein in your, in your diet, you will find yourself craving sugar and craving bread, uh, craving uh, sweet foods, which is a clue for you guys, because if you are trying to lose weight, the fastest way to do it is to make sure you're eating more protein. If you find yourself not filled after a meal, if you eat a, a meal and you're not filled, chances are you did not get enough protein in that meal. Nobody binges on T-bone steaks. You will top out on dense protein. You won't be able to eat more protein. Your body will top out. It won't let you. Yeah. Carbohydrates and sugars go under the radar. They're stealth. You won't know you had too much carb carbohydrates until you've eaten that whole pint of Ben and Jerry's, right? Even a half hour later. Have you noticed that? Like you can eat the whole pint of Ben and Jerry's, and it's a half hour later that you get sick. If we got sick right away, or if we topped out right away, we would never overeat that, overeat carbohydrates. It doesn't happen with protein. Protein, because it's very difficult for the body to process, you top out on it, which is an amazingly important diet tool. In fact, it is one of the most important weight loss tools you'll ever have or use, eating more protein. In fact, if you, were to, you can't eat just protein, because you've got to have the other, the other nutrients, as I'll tell you about here in a minute, but if you were to just eat protein, it would be very difficult for you to be overweight, if you were to just eat protein. protein the body can derive energy from protein, but it does it very ineffectively and in, inefficiently. So, protein is your most important of the nutrients. The best protein is going to be whey protein. Egg protein is a close second. And then you want to make sure that you have a full spectrum of proteins. If you're not eating enough protein, you'll find yourself craving sugar. Those are the most important things about protein. Except to say that protein is the hardest of all the nutrients to digest and the hardest of the nutrients to process. And now if you go, you, you leave here tonight and you say, I'm going to eat more protein. I want to lose weight. I'm going to go get some whey protein. You start to eat your whey protein. Or you start to eat more, more uh, egg protein and you don't feel so good, chances are you're not absorbing or digesting that protein. That means you've got to start working with the digestive system. In fact, you can use that as a clue, as a diagnostic clue, to tell you that you're not absorbing or you're not digesting your protein. If that's the case, you want to, number one, make sure you're getting digestive enzymes, like the ultimate enzymes. And the ultimate enzymes for you guys doing Longevity are one of the most important of all of our Longevity products. I love multifunctionality as a nutritionist. One of my favorite things about a good nutritional supplement is that it's going to have multiple uses. You get multiple <coughs> benefits. Digestive enzymes are a classic multifunctional supplement because, as the name implies, they're very important to the digestive system, especially for helping you digest protein. But digestive enzymes are also very important as, anti, as an anti-inflammatory. Wow. Picked it up already ten times, but never... Never drank it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm roll here. <laughs> Digestive enzymes are powerfully anti-inflammatory. They break clots. They break inflammation, which makes them great pain relievers for people who have back pain, for people who have post-surgical uh, post pain. Because they break clots, they're also great blood thinners, too. So you want to talk about multifunctionality, just the ultimate enzymes. Just the ultimate enzymes have, will help you with your dig digestive system. They'll help thin your blood. And they'll also help you with back pain or arthritis pain. That's an incredibly effective multifunctional supplement, and it's very reasonably priced. So that makes the digestive enzymes, to me, one of the most important of all the Longevity products. And it's one, that are, one that's very underappreciated and understated. Now, digestive enzymes require acid in the stomach to be activated, and many of us, believe it or not, don't produce enough stomach acid. Does that come as a surprise? No. Because the best-selling drugs in America are antacids. And the best, among the best-selling prescription drugs are antacids. Now, Larry the Cable Guy telling you to take your Nexium now so you don't have heartburn later, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you need have later. perhaps that's true because you need acid to absorb minerals and you need acid to absorb vitamins. So when you're doing your digestive enzymes, in order to make them active, do a swig of apple cider vinegar with it. In fact, doing a swig of apple cider vinegar after your meals is just a great thing to do anyway. Digestive enzymes are not because all you, you'll be supporting the acidity in the digestive tract and getting the minerals that are in the apple cider vinegar. Use organic apple cider vinegar, and Bragg's is probably the best. 
So if you're going to go out there now and do your whey protein, make sure it's a good whey protein. Make sure you're doing your apple cider vinegar. Make sure you're doing your ultimate enzymes with it.